Hi everyone! Easter is nearly upon us and so I thought doing something slightly Eastery themed um, would be fun and uh, you know rather fitting. So I picked this bunny page. Now this is in um, Rita Berman's Spring Walk book. And it's also in her Compilation Seasons book which I thought would, me, would be better to do this one rather than one that wasn't in both books. It means if if you've got the compilation book you can still colour along should you wish to. Now I'm using my Arteza experts today, I haven't used them for ages, I've got my swatch chart. Now I've made this swatch chart, I just realised I spelt my own name wrong at the bottom of the swatch chart. <laughs> Let's pretend that didn't happen. Um, and this is available for you to download for free from my Kofi shop. Now there are pillar link in the description. Now I've got several versions of this chart. There's one that's completed like this in there and I did that because if you're if you're thinking of buying the set and you want to know what the colours look like, although obviously once I've coloured them, scanned them and they're on your computer, they're not perfectly representative of what they actually look like. It will, I uh, can't get my words out, it will give you an idea of what sort of range of colours there are, but also um, there's a blank one so you can swatch it yourself and they're also is one that you can edit so if you don't like the order that I've put them in um, you can move them around a bit it's I think it's an excel might be a word file can't remember you can move them around a bit to your um, to, to to an order that you like so that's that I've also don't worry if you haven't got the Arteza experts I've got a couple of comparison sheets again in my Kofi shop one with polychromos and one with castle arts so you, if you've got those two sets you can use them instead um, I'm probably going to make a few more comparison sheets for our tasers um, in the future let me know if there's any you particularly want I'm going to leave that at the top there so I can use it because I just want to use it myself and uh, here's our bunny so let's get started let's come in a little bit closer I'm actually going to start with some of the florals around our bunny because I'm not really sure um, how I'm going to colour it yet. I've got a few ideas. I'm going to start with the flower. I'm going to do a bit of blending today. I thought it would be fun. Um, so this flower here, I'm actually going to start with this blood orange. I think it's the blood orange, yeah. And do some quite dark colour near the base here. And uh, I'm going to layer it up here near the centre of the flower and then just fade it a little bit like that. And we're going to use a different colour. Um, now this isn't unusual for me to do blending but what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, use a couple of different colours. So we're going to go from orange to yellow rather than just doing a few shades of orange. So it just be a little bit different. Um, it will make it quite colourful I think. It may or may not be to your taste. You know, it's just a bit different. I know I'm always quite samey I think with what I do and although that might be what some of you like sometimes it's nice to mix it up a bit so we'll see where it leads us so here is our orange base I'm just going to go back over just the sort of edges so it's really quite dark so I want to see quite a contrast between this and this sort of yellow tips that I'm planning maybe I should be a bit closer sorry here we go I think that's close enough. Now we're going to use a sort of orange step before we go to our yellow and I'm just having a look at what we've got. Um, I think the pumpkin orange is a good one. It isn't the darkest orange and um, the orange is the next step. If you're, if you're finding it hard you might want to do an orange then a pumpkin orange. But I'm just going to do the pumpkin. I'm going to go over this not quite into that area where it's really intense and then just fade it like that. I'm actually writing a book at the moment. I've got a little bit in there on blending. And uh, I realise how difficult it is to explain it in words on paper when you're not actually demonstrating it. Um, but um, it's um, it covers quite a lot of different things. Um, it's been really fun. I haven't written a book for a long time. I think I spoke about this in a previous video. Um, I've written a load of books before. Um, some for myself, some ghost writing, things like that. And uh, it goes back to my sort of um, um, previous job. This is the sunflower yellow. I'm going to use it for the tip. I'm just going to start at the tip and then pull the colour down till it blends in. Look, 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I used to be a freelance writer. And uh, actually, when I first, very first started my self-employment, it was with a book that I'd written. My very first book was a vegan recipe book. I was a vegan at the time. And um, I, uh, I put together a book and put it up on my own website. This was before ebooks were really a big thing. It was an ebook, um, and then Amazon started doing ebooks, and I put it on there, and it was really popular. I mean, I say really popular. I'm like, you know, I sold hundreds of copies. I thought that was a lot, but obviously compared to, I don't know, um, other um, authors, it's not really loads. But yeah, I was pleased, and um, yeah, so that was where I sort of started with my writing. This is the espresso brow. And I'm going to use it for this flower centre. I'm trying to just figure out what I'm going to do with it. I think I'm going to ignore that little line, that, and just go around the edge in the brown. Just fade it in a bit, like that. And then go for a cinnamon. Whoops. Picking up two pencils at once there. A cinnamon. So, yes, so um, I've started off with that. And then wrote a variety of other books, which were all still available on Amazon and through some other channels as well. Um, I think I did. I did a finance book. I'm going to go back to my espresso brown. And what I actually feel like I want to do is put a little bit of shadow just at the bottom of these petals. Don't have to do this step. Um, yeah, I did money management, I did a stress management book. I've read about all sorts of random stuff. Why not? What I, what I do, because... I'm doing leaves now, I'm just going to pick a few colours while I chatter on forest green. I want the forest green 614. I know my forest green is... Yeah, this is my forest green. <laughs> Number 614. And we're going to do these leaves to start with the base of the leaves. The reason I'm going to choose the darkest colour for the base, just because we've got these black areas, I think it would just work a little bit better. You can colour over the black or not. I think I'm going to. It doesn't matter. It may not make really show. And then I'm just going to sort of fade until I'm just past halfway up the leaf. Like that. Yeah, and... So, yeah, I did it, and then once I, I wrote a money management blog and uh, used to get paid for sponsored blog articles and things like that and kept writing books and, as I say, ghostwrited a few, ghost wrote, wrote, written, right, I don't know the right word, a few books for people, one on minis, I think, the car, that is, um, very random and things like that, became a freelance writer, did all sorts of blog articles for all sorts of people, as well as putting them on my own blog. I would, uh, and I was sponsored by moneysupermarket.com at the time, anyone British will know who I mean. Um, other, other comparison websites were available. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a different time. Nowadays, it, blogging doesn't really make the money it did back then. Anyway, I got involved with all sorts of things, but uh, then I started buying and selling second-hand kids' books because uh, my cousin was actually doing it in America, so I wasn't in, in competition with her. She, her, her husband of the time was selling them, not kids' books, but just books in general, and I started just looking into it, thinking, is there a market? found that there are certain kids' books which were worth a lot of money, so I started looking for them and selling them and, and things like that. That was a lot of fun. But um, eventually postage got too high, cost of travelling to places to buy the books got too high, had kids, they didn't want to be looking in shops all the time, didn't seem very fair. So that ended. Um, and then I did freelance writing um, for people like web copy, stuff like that. Um, see these leaves look the same but they're actually on the bunny so I'm not going to do those necessarily this colour so I'm going to leave that for now. We're going to use my favourite colour which is the pear green. It's such my favourite that I've actually bought a replacement because mine was so small. Now to blend these two I'm going to put down a few layers here and then reduce my layers as I blend across here 
and hopefully they just sort of end up smushed together. Um, yeah, so then I, I, I got into adult colouring and uh, I just started making videos. Although the history of the videos you've probably heard many times before. For those of you who are new, I just um, picked up a... No, I did a... I had a... Oh, it was a Virgin Experience um, voucher. Okay, um, it's too difficult to explain. Basically, it's a company that you buy experiences from, like skydiving and things like that. And it was in um, lockdown, so we couldn't do... So they suddenly started putting art experiences and things like that on there. So there was one that said it was a colouring course. And I was like, oh, that'll be good. So I did this colouring course and it was awful. Um, basically, it, it was, say, there were ten sections to it. And the first seven were how to draw. And I was like, well, I don't want to learn to draw. And then um, I'm going to do these berries in a purple. I think purple and orange always works really well together. A very deep purple. I'm going to use the amethyst purple. I think that, whoops, a sort of violet purple is, I think, is the best. Some people, the purples are more pink, like a plummy purple. This is the amethyst purple. And they're really small, so I'm just going to um, fill them right in. Okay, now, uh, and I want them quite intense, so I'm going to layer it up a little bit. Um, yeah, so it was, and then the colouring was with watercolour pencils. And so I was like, well, they said it was pencil, coloured pencil colouring. And I felt like I'd been slightly conned, <laughs> in, although the vouchers were free, because they were, well, they were a corporate gift for my husband which I spent, obviously. <clears throat> anyway, um, no, he was happy for me to have a go. But it, he would even more delighted now if he realised, which I don't know if he does, that that's what led me to starting to make my own videos, because I was like, I can do better than that. Also, the camera angle, the camera was like over the person's shoulders and just very far away. You could barely see what she was doing. And I was like, oh, I didn't like that. Right, so it's just a simple purple berry. It's too small really to do much with, but we've got some leaf, leaf? I was gonna say some leafies. What sort of a language is that? Some leaves down here. And I'm gonna grab the basil green. My greens are all getting short. Here we go, basil green. Um, I did forget to mention, I'm gonna do the tips in this basil green, very similar to how I did these leaves, but um, so more layers at the tip and then less towards the middle. Yeah, that I have got the 72 set of Arte's at Experts, so um, <clears throat> all my comparison charts and things are just for the 72. If you've got a larger set, then, because I think there's a 120 as well. I think there's just a two set. So um, if you've got the, um, um, if you've got the 120 set, then obviously you can use the comparison charts. Hold on, I put a bit of dust but they won't have all of the pencils on there. I have, I'm tempted to do a swatch chart for the 120 set, but um, these are grass, I'll do it the same. Um, but I wouldn't be able to fill it in because I don't have them, if you know what I mean. I could only like write, write them down. Um, I don't know how useful that would be, really. Also, colour order, how would I decide? Like with these, I have a feeling I produce two charts, one in the order that's on the inside of the lid and one in the order that I like because the inside of the lid order had some weirdities going on. Now I'm wondering whether to continue. I'm thinking that leaf, I might do the same as these and then maybe these two belong to this tulip. So maybe I'll just do this one the same as these just to sort of have a bit of... um. No, I'm doing it wrong. Never mind. But it's in reverse. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Talking. That's what I'm doing. So I would advise you to colour that end dark and keep this bend light. But do as I do, not as I do as I say, not as I do. That's what my mum used to say. Right, spring green is what I'm going to use for the other end. Yeah, there we go. Another sharpen. The greens are getting short. But as I say, I bought a set of the pear greens. Now you can buy them open stock on, um, I got them from Amazon. Um, then 
well I've got my open stock ones it only in packs of three so I had to buy three of the pear green but that was okay because it's a really nice colour and I can see me using it even if all the others run out um, I just really like yellowy olivey greens yeah, it's just me I've got a little flaw in the paper there and it's showing white and I'm just going to colour it in the wrong direction there we go it's better to just try and cover that up so what is everyone doing for Easter um, do you do anything we don't really um, I usually give my boys something but um, it's often just some money when they were little really small I used to just put money into their trust fund because um, they they used to get sorry shadowing what I'm doing they used to get Easter eggs um, from people so they didn't really need more from me um, so uh, I think they were uh, were okay for Easter eggs now what have we got going on here we're going to do this little daffodil here I think next it's really pretty isn't it can do this one in purple and pinks I think different I'm just going to try and use a big range of different colours it's unlike me I usually try and stick to a colour palette now this one's got some tape round this is the eggplant purple I'm going to use this for the bottom of these um, the reason it's got tape round is because it bleeds into white pen and that means that if I want to use, put some white dots say, on this tulip then they would turn neon pink so I put that tape on to warn my noises I think someone's sneezing I don't know to warn myself that if I am um, going to colour in these bits um, that if I um, want to use a white pen then I don't want to use it on top of this unless I want it in neon pink of course I've never tried other colours you know if if I know it bleeds I wonder if I put yellow on it what would happen would that go neon pink idea be fun experiment there we go now we want a sort of I want a sort of lilac -y. what have we got lavender that's what I want where's my lavender there use this lavender I'm gonna come down from the top here and just fade into the pink Yeah. Pink and purple are quite good friends, aren't they? It fades in quite nicely. It's unusual for me to do this, as I said earlier. I usually just keep, would do similar colours. But um, I thought it would be nice to do something a little bit different. Now I'm going to do a third colour. I'm just going to fade this up a bit. It's quite tricky with all that other colour in there. Make sure I make it quite dark down here. I'm going to do a dark tip. What have we got? Uh, we've got an ultramarine. What's that? Yeah, I'm going to use this ultramarine blue. It's a colour that I don't really like, to be honest. Oh, it's got a bit, of a bit on the end. Now, you notice I haven't done any sharpening today because I actually sharpened all of these before I, uh, before I came on because they were all really blunt. I've been making some swatch starts with them of course don't really need to be that sharp for a swatch chart and uh, they were all, every single one was blunt so uh, I sharpened them all you could darken this a bit more but I think it's quite nice not being too dark because the other colours aren't really that dark ok let's think about these leaves we could go with some bluey greens I think for these leaves because of the, the tone of that um, what's this green? Uh, oh no, that's blue. Mm. A shamrock green. So I'm using my um, swatch chart to help me. It's quite bluey. I think I don't want quite that blue. I'm going to go for the emerald green. I think this is it. 613. Yeah. You see why I'm confused when I show you. <laughs> and use this basil tip tip so layering up here and then just fading it you can use this technique where you just push hard and then draw your pencil away from the paper 
and it does a fadey line. It's, um, I think you can do it with pen as well, which is quite useful because pen is quite difficult to sort of shade. Um, I want a mint green. Is there a mint green in this set? Yeah. There it is. Of course, mint green. I'm just actually double checking that. Yeah. I haven't done the, this top bit that big, but I think we'll be okay. Just join it up. Now the Arteza are quite soft pencils, I find. Um, um, a little bit softer, I think, than the Castles, but similar. They're that sort of mid-budget range. We're going to do this little teeny one here. Um, so, more affordable than some brands. Um, obviously, that does depend on your budget. Um, this is rose red and I'm tempted to just block that in but I don't think I will. I think I'll go around the centre in this and then fade it off. Um, like that, just sort of fade it up each, halfway up each petal. Um, yeah, I think they're more of a budget range than some pencils obviously. I'm going to go darker I think. We'll go, we might use the garnet red on the outside. But you can, I can tell the quality isn't quite as good as say a polychromos or something but it doesn't matter. I sometimes, I mean I've told this before as well that when I first when I started colouring, I used Stedlers, and uh, people were doing fantastic work with polychromos. And I was like, oh, if I had polychromos, I could be as good as them. How wrong I was. I'm going to use the black at the centre of that flower. Um, it, although better pencils are likely to give you better results, it isn't always going to be necessarily the case. You, you have to practice as well. And I'm going to use the jade green for the base of my leaves. Um, there we go. Um, it doesn't just come, it's not just like I pick up an expensive pencil and suddenly I'm the I'm Picasso. Not that I want to be Picasso, but anyway. Um, you have to practice because they feel differently, they work differently, there are different colours to try and blend together and all that stuff. You know, so you have to um, take your time and get used to them. This one, I don't know what it is. Um, this is the matcha green. This is quite a versatile green, actually. I use it quite a lot, as you can see. Whoops. <laughs> don't press too hard when the ends are sharp. Um, but I just sort of thought, oh, as soon as I get good pencils, I'll get good. <laughs> no. Right. We're going to move it up a little bit now. I just need to move some pencils out of my way. There we go. Now we've got this little flower here, called quite a large flower. Um, we haven't got any pale pink, so I think I'm going to go with a little bit of pale pink. Um, but what are we going to do with it? Maybe some... Hmm. Maybe we'll go... Plum and flamingo. Is that flamingo? Is that flamingo? No. Peony. So that's flamingo. Hmm. Okay. Right. So we're going to have two pinks this time rather than two different colours. I'm going to start with my flamingo pink and uh, put it at the base. And I've got this little bit here. I'm going to colour it around that. i leave that for now. Just fade up a bit like that. So yes, it's not always about the pencils. And then you look at some pit artwork by some people and they've used the Crayolas or something really cheap and it's absolutely amazing. And you're like, 
it isn't just the pencils. <laughs> it really isn't just the pencils. Um, it's all about practice. And uh, so if you can't afford to buy the big brands or you can't justify spending the money on the big brands, it doesn't matter. This is actually fuchsia. I don't think that's what I wanted. No, I wanted plum purple. Bear with me. Here it is. Plum purple. So you don't have to. I'm going to use it in this bit here. I'm going to try and fade it a little bit up as I go. And then we're going to use it on the tips again, making it darker here. Just fading into the lighter pink. It's not going to be as um, stark a contrast as some of our others, but that's okay. Yeah, so it's so, and you might even find that you don't like them you buy an expensive brand you don't like it because it might feel really different it might not work in your particular books there are some um, colouring books that have really unique paper I suppose the right word and they only work with certain brands of pencil so uh, you have to be a little bit careful it's always good to read the reviews look at the flip throughs watch videos on the books and the pencils to make sure before you buy anything that you're super happy right Still got a mess of pencils everywhere. Right, the um, little bits popping out. I'd rather like to be purple. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with my purple iris. And again, we'll just block it in like we did with our berries because it's quite small. Now we have a um, foliage on this one. I want to keep it quite light, I think. Um, I'm definitely going to use this quite pale green. This is the lime green. It's really, really pale. And we'll use another lightish green. What have we got here? We've used a lot of our pencils already. Yeah, this is the absinthe green. I think it might work well with it. I've got the absinthe green still in my hand, by the way. I'm going to use that one first. Um, where should we go? I think we'll go dark at the bottom this time and just fade. It's quite, you can see it's quite delicate. It's a rather pretty colour, I think. I don't know if absinthe is this colour. I've seen it once, absinthe, someone taking some absinthe in a, um, it's a pub I went to that used to have it. This is lime green, but uh, it was very weird. Sort of, I think it was this sort of set fire to it or something. It's very strange, but anyway. Now, of course, I remember watching the film Moulin Rouge, and there was the absinthe fairy, I think, because of the hallucinations they were getting. There we go, strange film. Right, let's have a look at what we've done so far. Let's come back out and look at the whole page. So we have done the flowers. We haven't done any of Bunny yet. Now, we, I am going to do Bunny Blue. I haven't done very much blue, just a little bit here. So I think that will work quite well. Um, and I think that might be my next job. But maybe in the next video about half an hour haven't we maybe we'll do a little bit of blue let's do a little bit now I am going to use whoops my the robin egg blue because I really like it and I'm going to use this in the main areas so yes I know the tail is probably going to be white normally but we're not we're going to do it blue we're going to do all a bunny in a blue and I'm just going to try to do a light layer of blue that's reasonably even that's hard so holding your pencil nearer the end and slightly on the side um, um, is makes it easier to do a slightly more even layer even though it's a bit harder to stay in the lines but when have i ever been able to stay in the lines <laughs> so i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do it with you you may not be quite as fast as me. I know I'm really quick, but it's just the way I am. 
I'm always quick at everything. It irritates my husband to no end because um, I get in his way. Like if we're in the kitchen together, I'm whizzing around, bumping into him, opening the cupboards right by his face and trying to get him out of the way from because I want to open a drawer and, oh, and I'm like everywhere all at once and uh, he can't be in the kitchen with me. But what I tend to do is I try, I tend to get up earlier than him in the morning and uh, get most of my kitchen jobs done before he's in the kitchen and he can get on and do his. This, um, hmm, that's still a bit of bunny, isn't it? That's his tummy. So we will still go around there. Um, and um, so I'm doing all of that but, but I, I try and leave the job, like I empty the dishwasher, which is you're all over the kitchen because you're putting things away in different places. Or um, I'm sort of making breakfast and getting things out of various cupboards. And then I try and leave like the lunch boxes until he's coming down and then, or his lunch box. And then I'm just standing in one place doing that because I stand next to the fridge, everything's in the fridge. And uh, then it's a bit more calm so he can um, just concentrate on his own thing and get to what he needs to get to. But uh, I often have the children in the kitchen with me and they are okay. They don't get impacted by me buzzing around. Um, they, uh, they're used to it, I guess. And they might be doing the same thing and we might be crashing into each other and we just think it's funny. But uh, it's, uh, it's all about personality and what you're used to, I guess, what you find funny. This is quite an interesting design, isn't it? This really pretty sort of floral and things. We'll try and I'll try and come up with some different colour combos, I think, for the for the um, centre flowers, which, as I say, we'll do next time. What I'll do is I'll just get this base colour of blue down, and then I'll probably hmm. what's that? I'll probably finish. And then I'll, um, in the next video, I'll do some other blue bits and bobs, possibly, at, and all the flowers and things on the bunny too. So um, I'll probably do the flowers first, actually, and then we can see um, what it looks like and where it might need some more colour because I don't want to distract from the pretty flowers. You know, like these bits I will do in different blues, I'm sure. Um, but... Will I put some shading in there? Will I make some, you know, I don't know. It will depend on how it sort of looks when we're done. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how it develops. In fact, my last pet version of this I did, which was in the um, Seasons book, um, I did the bunny in a sort of turquoisey colour and um, I'd rather liked it. But... Um, this isn't quite turquoise, it's more of just a blue, isn't it? But it does make me wonder about a background, whether I'm going to do something or not, because, you know, it looks like it needs a blue sky, but we've got a lot of blue going on. So we'll see. Now, a blunter pencil can be more useful for larger areas but obviously not so much for the small areas because you end up colouring over it all like I am. Um, so uh, it's a bit tricky, but we're just putting down a light layer. If you do go over some of these bits and you don't, you can erase them, but once you've got a heavier layer of a different colour on top, it won't be so noticeable anyway, I shouldn't imagine. So uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, I'm not going to do all those details will be done later. So I think this might be it. We can always fill in any odd areas that need more work um, in the next video anyway. Yeah, so I think I'm going to leave that there for today. So if you come back tomorrow, we'll get the second half. These leaves almost look metallic. That's an interesting colour combo. Anyway, and we're going to do some more colour combos and things like that. But as I said earlier, links to swatch charts, comparison charts, oh, excuse me, in the um, video description. Or just hop over to my Kofi shop 
There are over 80 um, freebies in there for you to download, so uh, all sorts of things that you can uh, you can have a go at, have a look at, play with, you know, download. They're all downloads, um, they can be printed, you can just keep them on your computer, they're PDFs and things like that, so it's all good. Um, and it's all managed by Kofi, so it's all okay. And uh, so that's that. Anyway. Um, so have a lovely, lovely day. Um, thank you for watching. Um, please do like, subscribe and comment if you can. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. Happy colouring.